I am so glad that you pressed play. I have a question for you. Did you notice the writing around the edge before you put the DVD in? It's kind of concealed in plain sight, isn't it? If you saw it, congratulations, you, you have good eyes. But you know, this is kind of like the kingdom of God. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 13 that the kingdom of God is like treasure hidden in a field. He also says it's, it's like a merchant seeking fine pearls. And King Solomon in Proverbs 25, the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to search it out. Well, maybe you saw the writing, you noticed it, but your eyes aren't what they used to be. You couldn't quite focus on it. So I want to help you. Let me read it for you. <laughs> see, if I, see if my arm's long enough. It says, is your Bible reading on pause? Hmm. I think a lot of us feel guilty for how little we actually read God's Word. It says, do you tend to approach God's Word with duty or delight? Again, I think for most of us it's kind of a duty. How would your life change if your Bible was truly a delight? Yeah, a true delight. It says like your favorite game or sport or hobby or show. How would your faith change in your family, your relationships, your, your peace, your joy, your medication, if God's word was truly the delight of your life? And what's it say? It says, oh, it says, what if your greatest joy was entering his word? It's a fun riddle. What's the only thing that when you enter it, it enters you? God's word. Maybe it's time to play seek and find you know, what if, the, what if the key to all of this was simply becoming like a child? Jesus says in Matthew chapter 18 that unless you become like a child, you can't enter the kingdom of God. So let's do what Jesus says. Let's play seek and find. Do you have a game closet? Or did you grow up with a game closet? Well, we're starting five separate sermon series at the same time. And it's very much like a game closet. Each Sunday we'll open a different box. We have connect the jots. In Matthew 5.17, Jesus said that not one jot or tittle, which means dot or stroke of the pen, will pass away from the law until it's fulfilled in him. So it's a lot like connecting the dots, but with the words and verses that connect to Jesus. And we'll open the uh, puzzling parables box. You know, Jesus spoke in ways that required some, some thinking and some pondering and some piecing together. We're also going to collect the critters. We're going to hunt down big game, the animals in the Bible that are used to depict the Messiah. And guess who? It's the Bible people game. We're going to get to know the people who got to know Jesus. And then weaving the word. <laughs> This is the box that we're going to open the most. About every two weeks, we're going to interweave the gospel stories. The gospels are the first four books in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They tell the stories of Jesus, and they tell a lot of the same stories, but from four different perspectives to four different audiences. It'd be like finding four separate diaries written by four different people who experienced the same event. But you take those diaries and you cut and paste the pieces into one story. This is actually really fun to do because it feels less like studying and reading the Bible than it does like playing the Bible. And so I'll be giving you color-coded verses before the messages so that you can take them home and mix and match them. We made a website. It's hpwordplay.com. And it's, it's actually a Facebook group. And we did this so that we can talk about all the different sermons. And we can go online here and share what we're discovering, what we're learning, if we have questions or if you have insights for other people. And also, for when it comes to weaving the word with the Gospels, this is where you can come and download a color-coded Word document with all the verses so that you can put them together in a Word document. And if you don't have access to Facebook, then you can also get them at his place.
thisplacechurch.com or just come on into the church and get a printed copy. And that's pretty much it, except I have one more thing I really want to show you. Come look what we built in my garage. It's a sound stage. Four actors from our community have volunteered to portray the gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we're going to film them just reading the verses from whichever story we're using, and then we'll edit those verses together into one story. And then we'll show it at church on the Sunday that we do that particular sermon. They came out just two days ago for our first filming session. Want to meet them? This is Aaron Young. Hi there. He has agreed to be our Mark. And this is his father, Brian, who has agreed to be our Matthew. Um, tell us about your Jewish roots. I have none. <laughs> uh, but I play one at home. <laughs> On TV, I should say. And Not Brian is a local filmmaker. Just uh, finished uh, Mountain Runners which is what documentary on the sea to ski? The story of the first adventure race ever held in the United States, 1911, from Bellingham to the summit of Mount Baker and back for $100 in gold. And he's just been winning all kinds of awards and going to film festivals, getting it on TV. Yes, yes, life is good. <laughs> <laughs> and you, uh, let's see, you might remember Brian. Uh, oh, let's see. Trademark! That's <laughs> one of my favorite lines. He was the false prophet in Revelation. You were Ezra. Mm -hmm. uh, Are you Jewish? Yeah, <laughs> right yeah, yeah. The thing fell There's a head. bird on the hood. <laughs> oh yeah, Samuel. Yeah, Samuel. You were Samuel. Samuel sitting yes. behind uh, Goliath. Uh, oh goodness, yeah. who were you with uh, Nate when he was the uh, your yeah, wife, yeah, Hosea, yeah, yeah. the prophet yeah, Hosea. Hosea? With I, I've written you a love poem. <laughs> a poem. Yeah, I've written you a love poem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, we love Brian, and we're so glad <laughs> that he's in this. So, Matthew, yeah. Matthew, and Mark. 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 Now, Aaron has never acted for us before, so aren't we all curious to see what he does? We'll see. Yeah, he'll be great. <laughs> he'll be great. Okay, ask each other a single question. Uh, why did you uh, uh, agree to do this thing with Bruce? Put yourself on the spot. I knew it would be fun. As, as soon as my dad said that we were going to be doing this and Bruce approached me, I knew it was going to be fun. I've seen the videos before at church and I loved them and I was so excited. Wow, he's... Okay, question for Daddy. How did, how did you get involved in all this? Uh, well, I met Bruce years ago. I really admired the work he was doing. And uh, how can you say no to Bruce? That's, yeah. that's it. And, and the pay is really good. Pay is really good. I'm not getting paid. What? <laughs> Sh oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't supposed to say that. It's just during offering, you get to take one hand. <laughs> but you have to sit in a short row. <laughs> Way in the back. This is David Cox, and he has agreed to be our John. And uh, you might remember David from the Route 66 series. You played Job. Um, <laughs> we dumped water on you all night long. <laughs> That was memorable. Woo. How uh, are you? Are you native of the the area? Have you lived here all your life? No, no, no. I've I've lived all over the place. I was born in New York. I think of myself as being from Swarthmore, Pennsylvania, to a college town outside Philadelphia, because that's where I graduated from high school. But what, that what year? Nineteen fifty-two. Nice. And you can count. I'll be, <laughs> <laughs> by the time this airs, I'll be 79. Wow. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 I know who else you were. You were uh, uh, Epaphrodites in the musical. The oh, yes. <gasps> I am a little puny. <laughs> oh, yes. oh, that's what it was. Yes, where, Trey, where Trey was singing. <laughs> And then oh, you were the lawyer. You were the. Uh, that's right. You hired the three lawyers in the back of the car, and <laughs> everything was good until you showed God the bill. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness, you remember this better. Than well, it was I coming do. back as we're talking. Yeah, oh, my yes. This is Carl Turner, and Carl has agreed to be our Luke. And Carl, how long have you lived in the valley? Oh, uh, about twenty years. And Carl was in our Route 66 videos. Okay, let's see. You played Isaiah the prophet. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Matthew. 
and I can't remember the guy's name, but in the <laughs> one of the first, second, or third Johns, you were somebody uh, the, with a top hat. <laughs> Is it? Oh, and you were. The, was Jeremiah the one that said um, something about you women are a bunch of cows? Yeah, he was, yeah right. Yeah, he was just railing at everybody. Uh, was and, that uh, Jeremiah? That was Jeremiah. Yes, he was just. I don't know my own body. I, I hate all of you. If, if people get stop sinning, all of you. I don't know if I would use the word hate. <laughs> no, he was well, very angry. Yeah, he was angry, and he was uh, <laughs> trying to get people to change their lifestyles. That's Jeremiah. It's known as the the book of hate. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 anger management issues. Yeah. Behind me is a green screen, and that will allow us to replace the backgrounds with photographs. And at the turn of the century, late 1800s, uh, photography had advanced greatly, but technology had not caught up with the Holy Lands yet. And so it allowed this little window where photographers could go over and take pictures of places Jesus had been that were virtually unchanged. Look at this picture of the biblical uh, town of Shechem. Now, this is what it looked like at the turn of the century, late 1800s, and here it is, same place, today. It's incredible how quickly things have changed. And so we're going to take pictures that correspond to the different stories we're telling. So, for instance, the first one is the baptism of Jesus at the Jordan. So I'm looking at through these old pictures that I have of the Jordan River from the late 1800s, the turn of the century, and we'll choose one of them to use uh, with our story. Let me show you a, a sample of the finished product. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him. The Spirit, like a dove descending upon him. And descending as a dove and lighting on him. Well, this is going to be a lot of fun. So if you know anybody who would like to see this, by all means, pass it on. Share it with them. And I'll see you at church on Sunday. Mm -hmm.